Hey guys, and welcome to this episode of Quite Frankly. Now, you know I'm excited about software, right? I love hardware, I like software. I'm, I'm the kind of nerd that really likes to play around with stuff. Now, this is about the new plugin from MacFun, Aurora. And I have to be honest, I'm not really an HDR photographer. I sometimes even make the joke, you know what HDR is? Highly destructive retouching. But let's be honest, sometimes you just need that HDR mode because there's simply too much dynamic range in a shot. Now with modern day's cameras and I'm shooting the Sony, you already have a lot of dynamic range, but sometimes even that isn't enough. And of course, when you look at a picture like this, this was actually shot in Amsterdam and um, well, as you can see here, the windows are blown out, and I, I don't mind this because this makes it natural. I, I wouldn't want to see the sky in here because that's that doesn't make any sense. But under here, the, well, there's a lot of blackness. And of course, you can start using your shadows adjustment in Lightroom or Photoshop, but it won't be perfect. This is where HDR comes around and really makes an image work. Now, Lightroom already has a great HDR plugin. And of course you have all the other plugins, but somehow when MacFun releases something, I really like their interface and what they're doing. So let's take a look at Aurora. Now I selected three images, and by the way, I already tested it up to nine images and it works flawlessly. And the only thing you have to do is go here and you go to export and you go to export Aurora. And by the way, as soon as you install Aurora, you have to install the plugin. Uh, as soon as you start up the app, it will ask you for the plugin or you can do it with the menu. It's very simple. So as you're used from HDR software, you can check alignment, ghost reduction, chromatic aberration. But let's just keep it to alignment. I didn't bring a tripod here, so this was actually shot handheld. So let's see how it works. You press create HDR. Now, of course, it's loading the images, doing all its adjustments. And then I will walk you through some stuff that I found interesting. I won't walk you through the whole plugin because probably you already know how an HDR plugin works. But I just want to point some stuff out that really caught my attention with Aurora. Okay, so there we go. It's now merging. And of course, raw tone mapping. And there we go. So this is always with MacFun DI, meaning before and after. And as you can see, it already did a little bit, but it's still very, very basic. You can, of course, use a split view. And you already know this also if you ever worked with MacFun, of course. So let's go back to the normal mode. OK, so the first thing that you will notice is underneath there are presets. And of course, you can create your own or you can use them as a starting point. And the presets are actually pretty good. They're not over the top, although, well, some aren't. <laughs> and here we go. So let's just start with something really simple. Let's just start here. Now, here you can already see all the settings. Now, if you press this little device over here, you will actually see that it resets. It's OK, so let's start from here. Now, with smart toning, you'll actually already get a really good start. And I like the way that it's actually Everything is layered out very perf perfect, actually, for my workflow. So I will always start at the top. And you can do your tone mapping, of course. But normally, I will leave them in the middle a little bit. So let, let's just leave it in the middle. OK, so I'll start with my smart toning until I see what I like. There we go. Then I can adjust the highlights. I like that a little bit lower. Let's add a little bit of mid-tones and some shadows. There we go. Oops, that's a little bit too much. Okay. Now you can fine tune the whites. Now because the windows are blown out, I actually like them to be really blown out like this. It really gives a nice atmosphere in the room as you can see. So the blacks can be a little bit lower and I like a little bit of contrast. Again, I don't like a real HDR look. I like it to be a little bit more natural. So structure uh, is as in clarity. That's nice. And here is a very interesting one, an HDR look. Now, as I already told you, I don't like this. Like all the way up, it will give you a very weird looking image. Sorry. I have to also adjust these, of course. So I don't like that. So normally what I will do is I will just move this a little bit to the middle 
and just play a little bit with it. There we go. Okay. HDR detail, I will show you on full blast. Nah, not so nice. I will show you a little bit less. It will give you just a little bit of extra detail, which I really like in Aurora. Now, of course, you can also use denoise, but I'll skip that for now. Now, this one is interesting, image radiance. And I have to look it up what it exactly does, but I really like the effect. Now, I don't like it in this image, but I think when you see the effect, you will go like, oh, this could be interesting for, for example, a landscape or a night shot. Now, watch what it does. I will overdo it. It will give you a certain kind of glow, but it affects the higher areas and the lower areas more. So I really like the effect. But I still have to find out where I'm going to use it. And of course, again, you can use your smoothness to smoothen the effect out. So let's first reset it. Okay. Now we have color, of course, the normal color saturation, vibrance, and color contrast. Temperature and tint, all very, very standard. And here we go. This is very cool. The details. Now you have global, small, medium, and large. And let me just show you what it does. If I do this, you will get that hyper sense of um, sharpness. Now, I love it on some areas, but not on all. So medium and, of course, the large details. But you can also do it for the highlights and shadows. So you can do global highlights, shadows. Now we also have a glow setting, which can give you a nice atmospheric light, as you can see here. Really like this. And now it gets really interesting. Top and bottom lighting. What is this? This is incredibly cool for you guys out there shooting landscapes. Now watch this. I can lower the brightness on the top or I can give more brightness on the top. But I can do the same thing for the bottom. And I hear you going like, yeah, Frank, but what if... Well, don't worry. Look at this. You have a blending. You see that marker going up and down? And of course, you have a shift. And even a rotation. What about this? This is really cool. Now, let's say that I only want the window. And I want a nice large blend. And there we go. And now even the bottom a little bit darker. And of course, it adjusts while you change the blends. So pretty nice. Here you have your tone curve. And of course, you can create some funky looks. If you like it. I don't. Okay. And of course, you have color filtering. Color filtering is also interesting. For example, only boost the reds. Or lower the reds boost the yellows or lower it give it a little bit more warmth but you can also change the luminance now the fun thing is and a lot of people don't realize this but if you change the luminance of your um, color your color will actually get more vibrant as you can see here the reds are really really dark now and saturation can actually have a clipping point meaning it looks nasty like this now when you change your luminosity or your luminance you can actually make it way way more into the reds it's a really cool option. And you can find this also in more Mac font plugins. You have color toning, which again is not really my thing, but I'm going to show you anyway. So you can do your uh, you can do your highlights and your shadows. It's like a twin toning, or I have to look into this. I, I it's not my thing. I have to be honest. Okay, there we go. We have the vignetting. You can change the size of the vignette, of course. You can change the roundness, the feathering, and the inner light. And of course, you can also place the center. Now, this already looks nice. But one of the cool things about Aurora and, again, a lot of the MacFun plugins, since they also have layers. Now, normally, I would do my layers in Photoshop for the very simple reason. I like to work in Photoshop a little bit more with layers than in a plugin. In this case, however, watch this. I can add a layer and I can actually use a brush and paint in, for example, this area. 
Now you don't see anything yet, don't worry. And I can lower my smart tone. Now if you say, okay, Frank, but I want to know what I'm doing, no problem. You go here and you can show your mask. You can even invert your mask, clear your mask, fill your mask, or create a Lumosity mask, whatever you want to do. So there are a lot of options. You can blend this in, like for example with soft light. And let me see how it works then. There we go. You can use the blending modes, hard light, of course. So there are a lot of options in here. And to be honest, I never saw this this advanced in a uh, HDR plugin. I have to be honest, as I told you before, I'm not a real HDR user. So there could be plugins out there that do the same thing or do a little bit less. But overall, I'm in incredibly uh, impressed by Aurora and I really wanted to point this out to you guys it's been just released by MacFun and if you're into HDR make sure to check it out it's uh, like all the MacFun plugins they somehow do everything right so yeah really like this shot and again I tried it up to nine shots and it worked flawlessly so that's our uh, overview for today the MacFun Aurora HD and follow the link here um, if you also want to support our work and get Aurora from MacFun. Thank you so very much for watching. See you next time.